Welcome to Once Upon a Dystopia, where we dive into dystopian novels and flush out the gritty details of the bleak landscape. Then I put myself into the main character's shoes and see if I have the guts slash skills to survive those details. And maybe along the way, learn some lessons to help us survive if and when the crap hits the fan. Major spoilers are ahead. Today we are discussing the first book in the Hunger Games series by Susanna Collins, The Hunger Games. The synopsis straight from Goodreads reads, In the ruins of a place once known as North America lies the nation of Panem, a shining capital surrounded by 12 outlying districts. Long ago, the districts raged war on the capital and were defeated. As part of the surrender terms, each district agreed to send one boy and one girl to appear in an annual televised event called The Hunger Games, a fight to the death on live TV. 16-year-old Katniss Everdeen, who lives alone with her mother and younger sister, regards it as a death sentence when she is forced to represent her district in the games. The terrain, rules, and level of audience participation may change, but one thing is constant. Killed or be killed. Let's set up the world of Panem. The first thing to take note of in this book is that we are in North America, but it is no longer marked by the same territories. Climate change and nuclear war led to the downfall of the U.S., parts of Canada, and parts of Mexico. It was separated into 13 districts, and 74-ish years before the events of this book, there was a rebellion of the districts against the capital. The capital overall won, which resulted in the bombing and end of District 13. The capital established the Hunger Games, an annual event where 24 kids, two from each district, one boy and one girl, between the ages of 12 and 18, were thrown into a gladiated competition where they must fight to the death until one remains. The game serves two purposes. One, to remind everyone of the power of the capital, and secondly, entertainment. As the event is mandatory viewing by everyone in Panem, and the victors are treated as celebrities and given fancy homes and nicer parts of their district, and money, of course. It is illegal for districts to interact with each other, so each district more or less has their own culture and customs. Katniss Everdeen is one of the main characters in this book and the one whose point of view we see. She is 16 years old and from District 12. Peta Malark is the other District 12's tribute, 16 as well. Other characters to note are Gail Hathorne, another boy from 12 who hunts with Katniss. Hey Mitch Abernathy, a victor from District 12 who has to train Katniss and Peta. Ify Trinket, an escort for the District 12's tributes. Let's dive into Katniss's daily life and struggles in the game and my personal take on if I could do the same. Right off the bat, you learn that inside District 12, food is scarce. Katniss has to leave the district via a broken part of a fence to hunt for game to either eat or sell, which is not allowed. She uses snares and a bow to do the hunting, as well as adding her name to the review bowl, more for trade to get more rations. I myself cannot use a bow, nor do I ha- know how to make a snare, so right away I'm starving. But Katniss learned how to do these things from her father, so I think I could somewhat teach myself that. In the meantime, though, that means I'm adding my name probably more than her. The first major issue Katniss runs into after entering the games is dehydration. She almost passes out before finding a lily pond. I've never been close to dehydration, and I haven't spent a lot of time outdoors in forests to learn the ways of finding water, so I'm not sure how well I do. Although I think I would prioritize trying to find water where Katniss didn't seem to do so. After Katniss does find her water, she spends the night in a tree by said pond and wakes up to a wall of fire. She falls out of the tree and runs. She reaches an area where the firewall stops and thinks she's safe to stop for a minute. Then you get fireballs thrown at her. She is burned on her right calf and hands. Now I have burned myself plenty of times all over my arms, hands, and legs, and the pain isn't the worst in my opinion. But then again, I've had a child and broken bones, so I... So I think I can manage the pain easily enough. Katniss's burns, though, are definitely second degree, if not third degree, in her leg. And she treats it with cold water at first, which is what is recommended and what I had done before. So I think I would be okay. Next, the careers catch up to her soon after. The tributes from more rich districts who actually train for the games. Those are careers. Katniss climbs a tree. She climbs to 80 feet. They give up since it's becoming night. She finds Rue in the nearby tree, who points to a wasp nest. Tracker jackets are modified wasps that cause hallucinations, and their venom can kill you if you're stung enough. Katniss cuts it down, and the careers and Katniss are stung. Katniss does have some hallucinations and has to deal with the stingers left behind. I've been stung once, 
by me in my entire life and it was <laughs> bad. <laughs> Not 100% sure how it would do with tons of stings and then have to deal with hallucinations, though hers aren't too bad so I think I could handle it. Just have to remind myself that it's all fake over and over again. And I'm also not great with heights. I have issues climbing a mere six foot ladder. So 80 feet, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. Once Katniss has settled down from the tracker jacket, she finds Rue and teams up with her. They want to hurt the careers where it matters, their hoarded food. As you can expect, the careers mainly have the bronze, but not so much of the brain. So finding food isn't their forte. They devise a plan for Rue to smoke the careers out of their base and for Katniss to go see what she can do about the food. She finds a food stacked in a pyramid with a kid from District 3 where they make automobiles, televisions, and of course explosives was guarding it. She spots another tribute go up and steal food and notice she was avoiding parts of the ground. She also sees some dug up earth, puts two and two together and gets landmines. Katniss, way to go. Uh, she shoots a bag full of apples that she found on top of the pyramid. They fall and boom goes the food. And so does Katniss. This explosion, while yes, takes out all of the food, also badly and permanently damages Katniss' hearing. When I saw the girl avoiding the ground spots, my mind, like, right away went to landmines. And it only took Katniss three arrows to knock the apples down. And since I'd be learning the bow, it'll take me probably all of the arrows I had on me. And my hearing is already not the best, so losing a bit more wouldn't kill me. Though yet, it will make it so much easier for someone to sneak up on you, so she really should have stirred way further back. Other than the, at the end of the games where they fake take the deadly berries, this is pretty much all of the hardships Katniss has to deal with in order to survive this book. She does have to do a little after games interview where she has to fake love PETA, which honestly, anyone who knows anything about body language knows Katniss is faking. I myself am not heavy into PDA, so I would suck at this part, probably just as badly as Katniss actually. Now, I'm going to pretend I was born into this world and what I would do to survive. This is my favorite thing to do when reading any book. Picture myself in the world and think about ways I'd survive, ways the characters have messed up, what I would do instead. Sometimes I think I'd do a better job than the main characters, but, you know, that's probably just hubris talking. If I was born into District 12 with no siblings, around the age of six, I'd start learning some kind of weapon. Maybe you learn to fight. And I learned to hunt just like Katniss, but maybe you learn about plants if possible. They never mention a library or really books in general though, so I'm not sure how. I would not be putting my name into the bowl for just more rations. I'd be sourcing as much as I can from the forest, roots, bark, fish, animals. I'll even try to rehome or grow plants at my house. I think once I reach the age of 12, I start rationing my food and water that I give myself daily or maybe weekly or some kind of schedule to help myself not feel the worst effects if I went to the games and didn't have water or food right away. I'd also just explore the, wood, explore the woods more, see if they do sweeps of the woods or if there's a second fence somewhere further away. Maybe find better game or plants or maybe even develop a plant to run away like Gail wanted. Who knows? Once my name is picked, I'll be doing everything I can to be the nicest, friendliest, most well-known tribute out there. I want to get everyone to like me and want to sponsor me in the games. I do not care whose butt I gotta kiss. I want to survive. I will eat pretty much 24-7 while there to gain weight to lose while playing. I'll be super engaging in the interviews, and during the scoring interviews, I will downplay whatever special talent I develop. Scoring middle-ish, so I'm not a threat, but it still seems like I have a chance. Once inside the games, though, I'm going to be Katniss in the aspect of doing mainly on being mainly on the defense side of things. Hide for the most part, gather food and water, wait and see how many can kill each other before I actually have to do something, or at least into the game master steps in and starts throwing fireballs at me. Try to only kill when my life is on the line, which, yes, it's always on the line in the game, but you can maim someone enough to run away, or maybe they'll die from bleeding out. The issue of Katniss not finding water is fixable. She picks up a three foot square piece of plastic sheeting like right in the beginning before anything happens, which she just uses to store her meat, but you can use it to collect water. You can make a solar still with the sheet. You can Google solar still to see images, but basically you dig a hole, put a cup in the hole, fill the hole with some plant material like leaves, place the plastic sheet over the hole, way down the middle with like a pebble and water is made on the underside and falls into the cup. You could also use it to collect the morning dew, like when you go camping and in the morning you notice your tent is soaked in water near the ground. Overall, I doubt I win. I'm not great with be bringing hurt to others, even when it's for their own good. Like giving my son his pink eye eye drops, I had a hard time giving them to him because he was so upset about him. I felt so bad. 
if I had to grow up in this world and learn to fight or get really good at a bow, I think I could pull it off. So what have we learned to help us survive if the games were to come true? Lessons learned directly from Katniss are one, when your mom is a freaking healer, pay attention. Katniss should have known how to deal with her track it, jack, tracker jacket stings, how to properly deal with her burns and PETA's wounds. But she didn't. She didn't pay attention or she didn't ask questions or at one point she literally said she ran away to hide in the woods when a burn victim was brought in. Like, ugh. Two, when you're dealing with explosives, stand back. Like, you have a bow and arrow. You're already at a long distance and you have to think to yourself, there's 12 explosives about to go off that you even mentioned blew this person into pieces earlier in an earlier game. So you knew this? Stand further back. Number three, put way more priority on finding water. You should sacrifice and sleep on the first few nights to seek out water. Water is what's going to keep you alive. Here's what I think you need to add to your personal arsenal right now in this world that would help you in the future. Books that you should acquire. A book on foraging, but not just for ones that pertain to your area. Make sure to grab some for various bios, like the desert, the rainforest, marshals, uh, tropical, tundra, Antarctica, you know, things like that. So if you're plucked somewhere else, you have a better chance of surviving. Herbology books, which is using plants to heal, which is what Katniss's mother does. So the same thing, same idea as foraging, though. Find ones for other areas. A book on traps and snares, both for small and large creatures. Skills to acquire. Long-range weaponry, short-range weaponry, hand-to-hand combat. Learn how to live off the grid somewhat, as in maybe spend a few nights a week in the forest trying to get by with no modern things to see how well you're prepared. Well, that is all I have for The Hunger Games. Hope you liked my take on the book and maybe learned something. If you have a book you want me to cover or an author with a dystopian book you'd like me to do, please reach out to me via the email listed in this episode's bio. Or if you're listening to this on YouTube, leave any recommendations in the comments. Next time, we are going to be discussing Rot and Ruin by Jonathan Malberry. What are we doing with zombies? So thank you for listening and happy reading.